So, Android O. Google has just announced the next version of Android. Unsurprisingly, it's Android O. O comes right after N. Thanks, Oscar. And the first developer preview is landing today, giving us a very early look at what to expect from Android O, features that will begin rolling out when the update's ready later this year. So, let's dive in. These are your top 10 Android O features, starting with number 10, notification channels. In Android O, notifications can now be grouped by type, and you'll have more control over the type of notifications that you see. For example, you can change how news apps notify you, or how a music player might show you a persistent notification. Basically it means we're getting more ways to control the flood of notifications coming to our devices, which should hopefully make it easier to separate out the signal from the noise, letting more important notifications filter to the top. Number 9. Background Limits This is a big under the hood change which could potentially make a big difference to battery life on Android O. The new version puts certain restrictions on what apps can do in the background, like location updates, broadcasts for other apps to pick up on, and activities that continue running when the app is in the background. You can't really show this stuff working, but it's really a continuation of the work Google started in Nougat. Like those on the go, it's part of this push towards making Android more battery efficient. Number 8. Picture in Picture on Phones and Tablets Now, Picture in Picture was technically possible in Android N, although in practice it was basically limited to Android TV. Bringing it to phones and tablets is going to open this feature up to many more people, and if you've ever used Picture in Picture on an iPad, you'll know how useful it can be. Picture in Picture lets you shrink down an app to a floating section that you can then bounce around in the foreground while you work on other apps in the background. For video in particular, it's much more convenient than just splitting the screen between a video app and the rest of your apps. Other window related stuff in O, to put an end to those annoying screen overlay errors, Google's creating a new overlay window function in O, and there's also improved support for showing content on secondary displays, paving the way for phones, tablets, and maybe eventually convertibles to do more than just mirror their own display on a monitor. Number 7. Autofill APIs Google's making it easier to use password managers and similar tools in Android O with these new APIs. Apps can set themselves up as autofill providers and serve up passwords and other types of information that you might otherwise have to copy and paste, storing all these details securely and taking some of the legwork out of dropping them into forms. Sounds kind of complicated, but the idea is pretty simple. Just like you can easily switch between keyboard providers right now, in Android O you'll be able to do the same things for apps that use autofill. Number 6. Adaptive Icons This builds on the work that Google's done with circular icons on the Pixel devices, while it also helps manufacturers wanting to bring their own look and feel to Android's app icons. In O, apps can be given a custom mask, kind of like a cookie cutter, that can be a square, a circle, or anything in between. We've seen some custom implementations of this from Huawei, Samsung, LG, and others in the past, and it's always been kind of a mess. Each manufacturer does things a little bit differently, so building this into the OS in Android O is a smart way to make sure app icons, wherever they appear, look nice and consistent. Number 5. Fonts become a full resource type This doesn't make a huge difference to users, but for developers it's just an easier way to have full control over the fonts used in your apps, through XML without a bunch of extra code. This doesn't affect any font options that your device maker might have included, just makes it easier for devs to work with fonts in their own apps. Number 4. Wide Gamut Color Support for Apps in Android O, developers will be able to use wide gamut color profiles in their apps such as Adobe RGB, Profoto RGB, and DCI-P3. What does this mean? Well, as displays become better, it opens Android tablets and phones, but I suspect it'll mostly be tablets, to professional photo apps that use these profiles. There have been all kinds of rumors on the direction Google might be taking with Android tablets and convertibles, and this is a small piece of the puzzle which makes Android better for content creators. Number 3. New connectivity and audio features, and there are a few parts to this. First of all, Android O brings support for high quality Bluetooth audio through Sony's LDAC codec, which is important as more of us move to wireless headphones. On top of that, O introduces the new A-Audio API for lower audio latency. Audio latency has long been a weakness in Android, and so like wide color gamut, this is something that could be important for content creators. Next, Android O brings support for Wi-Fi Aware. This is designed to work a little bit like Apple's iBeacons, basically connecting devices together without a separate Wi-Fi access point. With Wi-Fi Aware in O, an app could send you information from other devices around you, or you could share photos and messages to people around you without using mobile data or a separate Wi-Fi access point. Could be useful at shopping malls or concert venues, anywhere where there's a lot of people and a lot going on. And finally, the telecom framework has been updated to better support third-party calling apps. There are new APIs for calling apps that don't need to use the system phone app, and these can now be controlled over Bluetooth as well. Number 2. Web View Enhancements in Android O Web views are the things that let developers show you web content in apps, like when you click a web link in Twitter. Android O makes web views more secure and stable by running these in multi-process mode by default, and adding an API so developers can handle their own web view crashes and other errors. Web content is still a really important part of apps, and so helping devs make this experience more secure and less crashy is a win for everyone.
Number one, improved keyboard navigation. This is going to be an important part of Android on Chromebooks. Even though most high-end Chromebooks do include a touchscreen, you still need a solid keyboard experience. And in O, Google's helping developers include better support for navigating around with arrow keys and tab keys. So big deal for Android on Chrome OS, and who knows, if anyone was planning on making Android convertible, this will certainly make that experience a whole lot better as well. As well as all that under the hood stuff, there are some minor visual changes too in this first preview. Fonts are a little different in the notification area, the settings app has been given a fresh white coat of paint, and there's a themes option under the display settings which right now just controls whether the notification shade is dark or light. I wouldn't necessarily read too much into any of that, this stuff may stay or go as Android or develops in the coming months, and Google has dropped cosmetic features from developer previews before. So that's what's there right now, and all of this stuff is just the start for Android O. Google's going to have more features coming in future previews, and we'll learn more about the direction O is taking at Google I.O. in mid-May. If you're eager to try this very early build of O, we've got instructions up on the site right now, androidcentral.com. Stay tuned for more on Android O in the coming months, and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos as they land. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.